Once that we've stitched all our panels, let's lay them out and join them together. Let's start off with joining the, both the back and the front panels. So we have an upper and a lower. The upper has buttonholes in it for this front panel. We just want to join the ends and join and put a clip in the middle, but we need to match the satin stitches when we actually sew the seam. Same for the back. Clip together, clip in the middle, and beware that we need to actually sew um, um, our satin stitches so as they match. The sides will be joined to the base panel to create the gusset for the bag. So we have a top panel that goes onto each of the zip sides. So we have zipper pockets and we have some sides and they have, they have buttonholes on them too. And then we have a base panel. And that will be the base of the bag. So we're gonna join all these together. First of all, we'll actually just put our tops onto our zip pockets. Clip them into position. We'll be sewing just inside that perimeter stitching line that the, we created with the embroidery. Check our pockets have got them been ripped out with the, the backing. And bring our zip to the centre of the block. And perhaps put a piece of washi tape on the zip puller so it doesn't get in the way when we are stitching. The head will go on to um, one of the panels as well. And we've lined the head with a different fabric. This lining will be the lining of the bag. So we need to cut out our lining pieces using our joined panel sections as a pattern. Let's start by using one of the back or the front, they're both the same size, and cut out a pair of linings for the back and front panels of the lining. Then we actually have enough for the two side panels and then we also have a base panel. Cut around the edge of that as, and using it as a shape. So we have a back and a front, we have a side, a base and another side and we're going to join the sides to our base piece of lining. We're going to make up our lining first. Right, that's joined. Let's go to the machine. And we're going to sew with a generous half inch seam. I say generous half inch seam so as that the lining feels slightly smaller than the outside shell of the bag and so it sits down into the bag easily without looking like it's too big. So if I used a half inch seam for the outside shell, I may use a 5 8 seam for the seams on the inside shell. I just play it by ear depending on how thick the lining is. Some linings can be very thick and bulky. I try and choose something which is a little bit finer, but not thin. Most of the linings I do for bags, I generally put a layer of interfacing around the top of them where they go the opening for the bag. Haven't for this one because it's a drawstring. We don't want it to be too rigid. These seams will need to be opened up with the iron. And then we turn this over and we um, are going to, I changed my colour thread so you can see this. I'm going to do a stitching line around the outside edge which is about half an inch in from the raw edge. And that perimeter line is going to be where we actually clip to when we're doing the curves of our front and back of the, um, of the backpack. So the bottom section of the backpack has curved corners front and back. So we need an idea of where to clip to, and by just running a row of stitching around there, like stay stitching, it will give us a really good indication of where to clip to. We don't clip to the, to, to the stitching directly, we stop just short of it. This is a very quick way of doing it, and um, it uh, makes it easier later on. So once we've got this, we're going to fold this section in half, and make a notch on the fold. So seam on seam there, end on end, seam on seam, and then we're going to make a notch. Just snip into the seam allowance, and that will be the centre to match to the centre of the front or back panel. 
Okay, so the curved edges are the bottom. And we have made a knot to find the halfway point. You can just mark it with chalk, you can put a pin in it, it doesn't have to be a snip. And we're going to find, I've notched one side, and we need to just notch the other side. Right, so, centre, centre, align them, put a pin or use quilt clips, to clip for the flat section of the of the base seam, so not don't go around the curve. Just go to the the seam allowance, or sorry, the the, the 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 join. I like to actually get all my flat surfaces pinned first. Sometimes I even sew them first, and then go back to my curved corners so I can rework them. So from where the curve starts. On from the other side using the indication of course just snip around and so we snip to this to the the stitching or just almost to the stitching and that allows that seam to fan out around the curve of that corner makes it so easy to stitch and we will stitch from this side up. We will stitch from the gusset being up. Gusset, aka two side panels and base seams strip, um, stitched together forms the gusset of the bag. There we go. That corner is nicely curved. Let's turn around and have a look inside. Yes, so we've got a curve in there. And we just stitch that on. Do that same side for the other side so that those are together. Really, really easy. A bit effortless. So we've got that side has been done. Now we need to apply the other side. Now in the base scene for the other side, we're going to need to actually leave a gap to pull our work through. So once this is sewn into the bag, we need to have a, an opening at the bottom so we can actually pull the whole bag inside out because it will be inside out. So we've, as we did before, centre on centre, then I put some clips in. I'm going to take that central pin in because that's going to be my gap. Now it has to be wide enough to get the force of the whole bag through. So I get a decent hand width, so five to six inches, basically from seam to seam if you can, and then sew it all together. So we're sewing from the top right round to where that opening starts and then carry on from the other side. Now, with the back, now this is against the back, this is where the straps will be on, we have got a tail. I want to see the right side of the tail with the stitching on it so as it actually shows against the wearer. Um, so it's not right sides together, it's right sides up. So right side of the tail up. Um, back panel up and before we put the head on we need to actually just put our um, magnetic closure on so basically i've just found that his where his nose finishes on the other side i've decided i'm going to put that closure. you can put it anywhere um but i have decided just to put it where where what i would say, say the nose holes are um or at the bottom of the the stitching on the right side and i've just marked the two placements um, on the on the um, washer from the magnetic closure. I'm just going to wriggle that through because really there's no other way of doing it unless you have a sew-on magnetic clasp or or a different system. The lining fabric um, probably needs a bit of interfacing down there just to hold that in firm, but this won't come out. It's not that. Um, um, strong that you can't or you'll be pulling away from the fabric and it has got long prongs so it will stay there okay so you could have a sew on one as opposed to a one that's got prongs just make sure you put that on oh, I put it on so I don't forget now I've got my 
loops which we've made. So in the notes, we've got loops and and how to make a strap. So the top loops, uh, sorry, the bottom loops go either side of the tail, butt them up quite closely, and then just stitch them into position um, within the seam allowance, quite close to the the, um, perimeter stitching. Long stitch, stitch slowly. Okay, there. Now, if we've got a placement mark there for in, on our, um, our bottom panel, and we'll be stitching past that, so that's quite safe um, when we actually join it. But if you have to unpick it, unpick it. First, I'm going to put the loops on. So the top loops will be about a centimeter or two centimeters apart. So you will find the center at the top of that panel, and then you'll place the edge of each loop a centimeter out from the center mark. So Find the center mark, so a centimeter, three eighths of an inch out. So there's a gap of three quarters of an inch or two centimeters between those two top loops. And on top of that, we have find the center of our head, of our neck of our head. Place it on, and that's going to be sandwiching those loops into place. That's a very thick seam. Uh, so just take it really slowly. Now I'm sewing from the wrong side just a little bit easier to stop the foot from catching on any bulk there we go so there's the head which will come over the front of the backpack and there's the tail sitting there which will be dangling over the wearer's bottom (laughs) right placing wings on the front and placing legs on the front. Now we have some marks for the legs, so we're just going to pin, pin those into cl- or clip those into place. And we've got a seam there, and we've got a satin stitch. And I think I've actually put the seam, the satin stitch, above the seam by. I think it's about half an inch, either half an inch or 1.5, half an inch or five eighths of an inch. It's one of the others in the notes. So I wanted it to be that satin stitch sitting above the seam. We don't want to encroach too far up into the top panel where the buttonholes are because we don't want that to be rigid. We don't want it to be, we don't want the wings to be too far down so they come into the curve of the base. So really, there's, there's only one place for them to go. Just make sure they're even. Machine base them into position within the seam allowance. That's for the the legs as well. For thicker seams for this project, I actually use the ninety a ninety top stitch needle. Right there we go. Now we want to make our gusset like we did for our lining. So we've joined our top sections onto our zip pockets, and we want to join our base section onto those side um, side seams. Stitching just inside the um, original perimeter stitching line of the embroidery on the block. Okay, those seams to be depressed open. You don't need to take any bulk out of them, they're actually fine. There's no bulk in them, so we need to press them open. Right, these have been pressed open, ready to assemble. Center. On center, right sides together. Because this is quite rigid, I think it is a very, very good hint to sew your three sections. Sew the flat side of the side, the flat side of the base, and the flat side of the other side. When I say the flat side, the but before the seam turns into the curve, that's the flat area. 
So I would I would be sewing that section first, just to where the curve starts. Then, so I'm going to pin these all together. I think it makes it easier if you do it in in bites and stages. Oops, funny on a screen. Come down. Okay, because we'll be clipping around that corner for that to be splayed out and fanned out to fit that curve. Sorry, my arm's in the, in the place, but you've got to manhandle this project because it's actually quite firm. Oops, we're up in the heavens. So there we are, you can see that we've found that, found that corner out. So we've sewed it in sections, the flat areas. The flat area there and the flat area up the side. Now I'm going to clip into there. Clip with my scissors into the stitching. Only about, you know, like three eighths apart, a centimetre apart. Then manipulate it so as it fans out and it fans out fine it's been it's been measured and cut and made to fit right stitch around you want to be quite proud of your corners because they need to be lovely and curved and i like the fact that they're not square because a dragon doesn't have square bits, so I like the fact that they does represent a sort of an organic corner. Very nice. Right. So one side is done. So that's the side we see from the street. Now we want to finish the other side. And it's the same technique. Basically, we're going to just tuck everything inside and apply the other panel to the three sections, the sides and the base. Before we do this, though, we just, there's a couple of housekeeping things. We need to actually thread our uh, drawstring. And now I've just made some made some um, uh, drawstrings stri just by turning and turning the, the fabric. We're going to thread them through and catch them, sew them in the seam allowance so as they are tacked in the seam allowance, make sure they're nice and flat. They only go through the outside layer. You don't see these draw thr st strings through the lining. Okay, they just go through the outside layer. Put a clip on there, and we'll actually then would we'll go and we'll stitch over the ends of that section there. We'll stitch over that within the seam allowance. We'll do the other side, so it's all it's there to draw up. Other thing we need to do is put the other side of the of the the uh, magnetic closure in, measure an inch and a half up from the, the joining seam of those two panels, used my washer to make my marks for where I'm going to make some cuts for the teeth of the, or the prongs of the other side of the magnetic closure. Push the closure through. Put the washer on. Open the prongs. There we go. So, that will sit, on, sit like that when it's all joined together. It's such a fun project. I've had a smile on my face <laughs> right through making it, really, because it is, it's such a fun project. Some, some child or adult will get a lot of joy out of this. Um, I'm not saying it's just for children, because it's not. A bit of fun. Centre on centre, we're doing the base panel. Center on center, then side panels and our corners. Exactly the same method of clipping and spreading. And then it will be all joined together, both sides. I 
I haven't trimmed anything out because I haven't. The fabric's got a knit base on it from there, and I just haven't trimmed anything out. It's been had some interfacing on the back of the fabric just to give it some body, but I haven't trimmed those corners out, and I don't think I'm really going to either. Because it actually looks okay. So, And I would, at this stage, take the opportunity to press those seams open down to the curves as much as you can, just to keep them a little bit flat. Probably more so the seam, the back seams need to be pressed than even the front seams because the front seams have got the wings on them, so they're never going to sit flat. <laughs> That's quite cute. I quite like it. Can't wait to get a name for it. Practical pockets. Just checking all my corners, make sure that I haven't got anything coming to grief and that there's no stitching missing, etc. Because once I've got my lining in, my lining's in. Right, so tuck our wings in, tuck our feet up, tuck our tail up, and we're going to slide it into our lining, which is inside out. Make sure everything's tucked in. See, and there's our opening there for us to pull it through. We've got quite a lot of bag to pull through that small opening, so we're going to have to be a bit gentle. We're going to clip this around. We want to put seam on seam and use some quilt clips to clip that top edge. As I said, I normally would put a, a row, a, um, a layer of interfacing at the top of my lining of my bags and tote bags there, but because this is drawstring, have not done that this time. Because I wanted to be able to draw up. We're going to need to stitch quite slowly across that back seam where we have the head attached. Because it's going to be firm. So I'm starting from one of my seams. And I'm just stitching inside, again inside my stitching line. Sorry, my hands are going to be a little bit in the way, but it is quite firm to try and control. It wants to not be compliant. So once we've got that joined up around the whole edge, we need to sort of very slowly turn it through. I've seen people use the term though, they're birthing their bag. Yeah, we are, we're, cre we're creating a dragon. So just take your time and be patient. There we go. Nothing has come adrift, which is great. And while we've got that lining out, so I'm just going to tuck that in to show you, but while we've got the lining out in there, we need to actually sew that hole up in the bottom of it. Make sure our cords weren't caught anywhere. Okay, so we're just going to sew that hole up. Put some clips in it and then just with your straight stitch, just stitch those two folds together. So we'll just stitch along there. Like so. Oh, 
push that down. Now we need to give that top edge a light press. Very light press. Because we need to stitch it. We're going to top stitch. We, we, on the, the notes, you'll see that we've top stitched it both sides of the buttonholes. And we've only gone from our back seam around the front to our other back seam. Um, and then we need to thread on our back straps. Thread through the adjuster or the slide. Okay. Take it from the top down, turn over half an inch, and then turn over three quarters of an inch, and stitch that in the middle there with the machine. Again, stitch slowly. There's no right or wrong way. If you found this is really, really bulky, and you found that the, the stitching through those loops is really, really hard, put the straps straight into the seams. There's no reason why you can't. There we go.